Welcome to part two of this series. Now in this video we're going to set up an IDE which is an integrated development environment to work alongside Blender to help us out with our coding. In this case we're going to use VS Code. Now this is the Windows version of this video. If you're using Mac OS or Linux I've got links to dedicated videos down in the description below. Now Blender comes with a built-in text editor and we can see that in a couple of ways. We can change a workspace to the text editor itself or use Shift F11. So if I do that now we get ourselves the text editor open up or we can go across, let me just set that back to the 3D viewport, we can go across to the scripting workspace that we already have. And when I first started working with scripts in Blender, I did everything exclusively in this text editor. However, as I've developed, I've realized the power of using an IDE complementing Blender really does accelerate your workflow. So we'll be spending a lot of time in the text editor, having a look over here on the left hand side of the Python stuff that actually goes on in the background and using that to develop our scripts and eventually our add-ons as well. I'm going to assume that you guys don't have everything installed and ready to go, apart from Blender of course. So we're going to start with the basics and that's going to be installing VS Code, so let's go and do that now. Okay, so in front of us here we have a brand new installation of Windows, we haven't even got uh, Blender installed on this. And a couple of things to guide you through here. Now I'm going to install Blender, VS Code and Python from their websites. However, I have in the past used a tool called Nunite, so N-I-N-I-T-E dot com, and you can actually put a tick in the necessary boxes to install this for you. Now I want to be clear as to what I'm installing, and even though you can hover over Blender here to see it's 2.82, I don't know if that's 2.82 to A because it's got the 0, 0.0 there. So I want to make sure that I've got everything installed. Now I've just got some shortcuts here to Blender Org, VS Code and Python Org, just in separate tabs there. And then I'm going to download Blender in the background. I'll get that installed. I'm going to download VS Code. In this case it's for Windows. And I'm going to download Python. We'll go through the installation of those at key points during the video, just to show you why we're installing them as we go. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to set up is VS Code. So let's get that installing now. So I'm going to accept the agreement and just click through next, checking as we're going. I do want a desktop icon, so I'm going to put a tick in that box and just carry on installing. Now it won't take long to install, it's not a particularly big file. If you do choose to use another IDE, that's absolutely fine. You'll have to adapt what I'm saying here to make sure it's working for your particular IDE. And here we go, we're over in VS Code. Now the first thing I'm going to do here is just make the whole interface a little bit larger so you guys can see it with Control and Plus on the keyboard. There we go, that might be a bit too big, I'll knock it down if necessary. So the first thing I want to do is just create my workspace, the environment I'm going to work in. So at the top left here, I'm gonna click Explorer and I'm going to go and open up a folder. I'm gonna create a folder at this point in time, a new folder, I'm gonna call it Test. Now, you don't have to go in this specific workflow, it's entirely up to you, but here I'm gonna click, now this has opened up our workspace, click on New File and I can put in here test.py which will indicate it's a Python file. The moment we do that, we will have the Python extension is recommended for this file. Do you want to go ahead and install it? Now I'm going to click install here and that will change on the tab on the left hand side to the extensions. Now this happens to be just another way of installing the Python linter, debugging, etc. So that's all there ready to go. Now what I'm also going to do whilst I'm here is in the search box at the top, I'm going to search for Blender. And by searching for Blender at the very top here, we've got Blender development. We want to install that as well whilst we're here. Okay, now it will come up with a series of errors. I'm going to dismiss them for the moment and we can always bring them back up again with the bell icon down in the lower right. We can bring up notifications. Now that everything's installed, we're going to go back. I'm going to close down this tab. Here's our test PY. Okay, so let's start typing. Now, generally you would have to import the libraries you want to use. So a common one might be the math library. And you could see there, there was no autocomplete. It's not guiding us as we go. And if we try and access the math library by going math dot, 
there's nothing appearing. So we need to sort this out. So we need to configure uh, the interpreter and we also need to configure the linter enabled to do that. Now, there's a couple of ways of going about that. We could have clicked the button that was uh, there a moment ago, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna go Control, Shift and P to bring up the search field. And we've got a series of options here and I'm going to type in Python, so P-Y-T-H-O-N. And as we come down here, we've got a series of options that we can pick. I want to select interpreter and you'll see there's nothing there at the moment. So we need to, to install something else on our system so that we've got Python available for us here. And we're gonna get that by installing Python onto our computer. Let's go ahead and do that now. So on the downloads, you may remember we've already downloaded Python 3.8 in this particular instance. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that. And before I go ahead and click install now, there's an option down here to add 3.8 to the path. Now it's entirely up to you. It does change what we need to type in later if you don't do this because we'll need to run it with a different command. I'm gonna go ahead and add it to my path because this version of Windows doesn't have any Python in it at all at the moment. So let's go ahead and install now. This will take a few moments to do, but once it's done, what we can then start doing is installing the rest of the stuff we need in VS Code. Setup successful, great, that's good to see. I'm gonna close that down and go back into VS Code. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and open up my terminal. So at the top here, I'm gonna go terminal, new terminal, and then we can start typing some stuff in. We can test to see what version of Python we have installed by typing in py, dash dash v-e-r-s-i-o-n or version and there we go we can see that i've got version 3.83 which is the one we've just installed we didn't have it before that's great let's see if anything else is working at the top here now so if i was to go math dot no not quite there yet now sometimes after you've installed something you do have to restart so i would advocate restarting vs code during each process so you can see what is working and what is not Okay, so now we've restarted it, we can see our other options have appeared. And also now, when we go math, we can see it's starting to autocomplete. And I can go something like math.py, which would be 3.142 or so. And I can check that everything's working to do with standard Python by printing that out to the terminal down below. So I'm gonna use the print function and pop math.py in there. Then when I go ahead and click the run button at the top right, the little green triangle there, uh, let's dismiss these again for the moment. We see that it's going to print out 3.141. It's printing out Pi for us. Brilliant. So we know that Python is up and running and working. Now, when it comes to Blender stuff, we've got an extra step to go. We would want to import something called BPY, which is the Blender Python library. And then we should be able to go BPY. Okay, it's auto-completing that bit because it knows about it above. However, when we put the dot operator in to access that library, we're not able to do anything else. And this is where we need to install a module that has all of those auto-completes for us. It's gonna speed up typing in and also prevent us from creating mistakes later on. So in order to do that, I'm gonna go down to the terminal, which I haven't closed. If you have, go up to terminal and create yourself a new terminal. And we're gonna type in pip which is the Python package installer. And I'm just gonna make sure it's working by typing in pip, it is. Now, if yours comes up with an error at that point, what you can do, and it's likely that you didn't put the tick in install to path, not a worry if you have, what you can type in is pi, I'm just gonna look at my notes here to make sure I get it right, is pi-m to tell um, pip you're going to install a module, and then we can go pip, and then install, and then you type in whatever else you need to install. In fact, if I type that in, you must give at least one requirement to install. So that will also work in this particular case as well. So I will use the shorter version, pip install, and we need something here. We need to tell it the module we want to install. So it's called fake.bpy.module. And then we put the version number in. In this case, it's dash 2.82. Now, when we press enter here, it will start the installation of that module. And you can see here, it's very quick. Now there is a, a problem here, or a warning at least, saying that we're using an old version of PIP. For our purposes, it doesn't matter. Now that we've done that, and it can take uh, VS Code a few moments to catch up, we can see whether we can access that library. So BPY dot. Now all being well, it'll take a few moments and this will pop up. And let's see if we can go ahead and add in a Suzanne the monkey head. So BPY dot ops 
dot mesh dot primitive there we go monkey add and we need parentheses open and closed on the end there now this script itself will add a monkey to our scene import math is not important anymore so let's remove that and there we go we're pretty much all set up to start working there are a few tweaks that we'll need to go and do along the way but for the moment that's our first script so let's go ahead and save that and you'll notice here at that point we end up with our linter whilst we're here we know that pip is working so i can just uh, select install and it will go ahead and install that for us and stop bugging us about it now if we hadn't tested pip working it would have failed at that point and we would have had to install pip okay so we've got our first script completed and if we run this in blender it should hopefully add suzanne the monkey to our scene let's go and test it now of course i'm going to have to install blender so i'll be back in a few moments and here we go over into a fresh installation of blender i'm going to keep the standard settings there uh, dismiss that and just like vs code i'm just going to increase the resolution scale of blender itself so you guys can see what's going on a bit more clearly so where we were before i'm going to go across to the scripting workspace and then go ahead and open up what we were working on and that's in the test folder test pi so here we have bpy.ops mesh primitive monkey add now what happens i'm going to delete my default cube bye bye and then we're going to go ahead and run the script and you can see suzanne the monkey has appeared in the scene pretty awesome we've got a script working straight away and that is brilliant well done if you've got this far we're pretty much ready to go now a few things before we finish off first of all if you make a change in here uh, let's just add a quick comment in something like my first script now if we go back to vs code notice that that hasn't updated that's not a big issue because what we need to remember to do is save so if we go ahead it's alt and s whilst you're in this particular window now we can dive back over and see that that has come across and same's true the other way so we can go yay on the end unless we save that it won't appear back over in blender so if we go ahead and this is control and s unfortunately you're going to have to remember the two and you'll notice it doesn't update straight away like vs code does we have a little red warning at the top of the text viewer and if we click on that we can reload from disk and it will update it so it recognizes that it's changed but it won't overwrite what's in here okay brilliant so there we go we've created our first script well done if you're brand new to this we've got suzanne the monkey appearing at the click of a button so is that an add-on no it's just a script at the moment but as we develop our skills we'll turn those scripts even though they're quite simple into fully fledged add-ons and that will start to really make things come alive if you've enjoyed the video remember to hit the like button subscribe to the channel if you want to see more and hit the bell icon for notifications when the next video comes out in this series and I'll see you all in the next video. Take care.